All right, we've kind of uh, steadied off at participant numbers, so I think we'll just get started. Uh, we've got our photographer who took this beautiful picture, Alex Harris, in the background doing all the tech for us. So she's just going to get a video started so we can all get a, uh, acquainted with the Sidaeus Flycatcher Forest. So settle in for a two minute video just to get us started. Take it away, Alex. Coastal Douglas fir ecosystems can be found throughout the Salish Sea. They are one of the least protected and most threatened ecosystems in Canada. They are characterized by iconic tree species like Western Red Cedar and Arbutus, diverse and rare ecosystems like Gary Oak Meadows, and many threatened bird, insect, and other animal species. The coastal Douglas fir CDF is one of the most threatened ecosystems. We have maybe 3% left in the range of what has traditionally been here. The language came from the land, the art came from the land, our worldviews are surrounded by the land. We have origin stories within this ecosystem that inform us on teachings and lessons. Their importance cannot be overstated. This is why Raincoast and the Pender Island Conservancy are raising funds to purchase 13 acres of coastal Douglas fir on Sedaeus, North Pender Island. Really the only way to protect these types of habitats is through ownership. And just preserving this on its own is really important, but it also will connect to other protected areas that are already in the neighborhood. So we're trying to increase the connectivity of these protected areas in addition to just protecting individual pockets like this. This place is important because it's so rare and we need to protect it because there's not much of it left. And not only do the people rely on it, but all the animals and birds and bugs and everything else that lives within it. With your donation, we can permanently protect the Sedaeus flycatcher forest. Thanks, Alex. So there you have it. That's the piece of land we're hoping to protect. Um, for some people who just joined, hello, welcome to our midweek webinar, Land Protection in Island Coastal Douglas for Habitats. Um, we're gonna move on uh, to a land acknowledgement made by Josephine Henry, who's a Sinshothan language revitalization student, as well as being a teacher, and in my experience, an excellent mentor and a heartfelt storyteller. Uh, so I'm gonna turn things over to her. Can you all hear me? Good. <laughs> Hello, 
tiimis ära olla, et muutad tšeelt, et hõne nüüd see tees flycatcher forest piid kõndada tõnõhlda. I et climate action salta. Su tšeen äol salta i i tatunuh salta i aitnakva. Haiskõne kõhaha mõkvõns tšee, mõkvõt leitang. Kõne nüüd tau suukvõt salta mõkta tiitas nüüd Moktas kõnna, moktas ta lõi, ta kõtsa, ta eelõnga nõkõlda. Moktas tšeenuh, moktas siihlen, siit aitz teonuh. Ta tõtleidsis alta ei ta siisjad. I mokta tala taltanu, hõnga kõns kõnda, mokta tala taltanu, laata hõlis, laata tõlsakva. Tšeenuh, kõhaha teia. Haiskõna kõhaha tihta siiam, kus angest tauhad mõknes tšele tšele tia teinen. Su ei tatunuh salta, ei skupu salta, et eljaas hõnengs, kus tšee näu salta. Haiskõna kõhaha tihta siiam, kus la leenangad nesti võel. Haiskõna kõhaha tihta siiam. So, ait teinen, good evening, everyone. So you're not uh, left in the dark about what I was praying to the sacred creator um, about my words that I shared with the creator. Um, I guess, first of all, Swilam Tanat Taniste, Chislas and Adhusetic, Bakuchin Tane Eight Lungs, E. So the Eight Lungs at the Natain Su Chakwas the Elamanak la ta tlaitra sedes i ta tlaitsa kwa la ta la kusi la ta sedes. My name is Josephine Henry, or Thuilam Tanat. And I live in Hukseetnich, Pakwachin First Nation on the Saanich Peninsula in the North Saanich. And my mother is from Seot, where the house is on top in Saanich Tin Bay. And so even though I'm from the north side, um, I guess historically I would have had access to the lands on Sedeus and, and the fishing waters and harvesting in and around Sedeus through my team, through my mother, um, because she is from Seo. And um, uh, so uh, what I was, um, my, the words that I shared with the creator was I was, uh, giving prayers of uh, acknowledgement and appreciation for, or gratitude really for all that he has created, all the gifts that he's created in our homelands, um, or all of our sacred um, mountains and, and um, um, our waterways like the rivers, the um, um, lakes and, uh, sorry, sometimes I can't remember what the translation is in English and and the salt water itself, that is, you know, that is a living entity in and of itself to us, and all the beings that live within the salt water itself. They are all sacred and precious to us, right down to the, you know, the little mussels uh, and to the little, um, you know, the barnacles, all living beings, even the winds, the winds themselves and the rain, those are living things to us. And they're all sacred and precious to us. Um, but also all of the medicine. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, the dogs are. Right. <laughs> sorry, it's okay. We have a house full of ravenous dogs here. <laughs> um, so um, where was I? And. Um, it's all of the, the food that is medicine and all the medicines itself um, that we use to, to, to make our, our, our squaloquins, our body, mind, and spirit right and whole. Um, and of course, the islands itself, the islands, all of the islands, um, Gulf Islands or what have you, whatever you may call them, refer to them as, they're all our relatives of the deep. That's what we refer to our relatives are, so including Sedeus. 
um, as well as the forests, all of our beautiful forests and plentiful forests. I've asked for him to, um, or for the creator to take pity on us as we look for ways to, um, um, you know, create, find strategies to work together, to learn from one another and, and find common ground and pursue common interests. Um, uh, like I look to, um, to do as a, as a member of St. Mitch with um, vetted interest in, in the work that goes on in Sadeus and the developments and the, and the, and the undeveloping and, and the healing of the lands and the waterways around Sadeus. Um, so I asked for, um, um, what's the word in English? Um, I asked for him to um, kind of like, like take pity upon us and, and allow us to, um, or to remain patient while we look for ways to, to, um, to mend our, our, our fragile ecosystems and our vetted interests. Um, and so that we can work together in friendly ways and in kind ways to support one another. Support one another. Um, and I thanked him for each and every one of the attendees here tonight, all those that had good, good thoughts of being in here or good intentions and that couldn't make it. Uh, you are all very precious and sacred in the vision of the Quisate Mitch and our ability to uh, continue to protect Quantata Shwalakwa Asta the which means, you know, to protect our relatives of the deep. Um, uh, so your continued pursuit and understanding and, and, and action and even just being here is um, good medicine to us, the Quisate Mitch people, in ensuring our we are. Um, carrying out the teachings that the creator has given to us to protect our relatives of the deep, um, but also good medicine to the wonderful folks and all the energy that they committed, um, uh, the people of the rainforest, Raincoast Conservation Society, foundation, sorry. So, Aishka Heila, thank you all. Aishka, thank you so much, Josephine. That was really wonderful. Thank you for your blessings and your prayers. Um, we all feel very grateful to be here tonight and be on these lands. Thank you. Uh, I should probably acknowledge that I'm uh, not actually on the Sainage territory today. I'm on the Lagunquin territory in Victoria. Um, I'm a settler on these lands of French and German descent, and I feel very uh, lucky to be here in this beautiful part of the world. Um, and I should probably introduce myself. I'm Shauna Dahl. I'm the Gulf Islands Forest Project Coordinator for Rain Coast Conservation Foundation. Um, in addition to Josephine, I'm joined here tonight by Dr. Erin O'Brien, who is an avian biologist and doer of all things for the Pender Islands Conservancy Association. Um, we're here tonight to tell you a little bit about uh, the Sedeus Flycatcher Forest and our joint initiative to purchase this 13 acre parcel of coastal Douglas forest, coastal Douglas fir habitat uh, on Sedeus North Pender Island. Uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, some housekeeping on how this is all going to work. Uh, I'm going to speak for a little bit about coastal Douglas fir ecosystems and why it's so important to protect them and how uh, the Conservancy and Rain Coast found themselves working together on this project. Uh, then I'm going to hand things over to Erin to talk a little bit more about the forest itself and its ecological value. Uh, and then we will take any questions you might have. So you'll see at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A button. And we invite you to submit your questions there. We'll just have a continuous uh, presentation and then we'll just address all those questions at the end. And Alex in the background will compile those for us. Um, I think Josephine is planning on staying till the end. So if you have some questions for her, feel free to put those in there as well. Um, and if you want to share a little bit about where you're calling in from or anything like that, you're welcome to use the chat function there at the bottom. Uh, so to get started on a little bit about the CDF, the Coastal Douglas Fir Biogeoclimactic Zone, uh, I'll be calling it the CDF throughout this presentation for those who aren't familiar with that abbreviation. Um, and we heard in that video that uh, the CDF is among the smallest and least protected of 16 such zones in the province. 
And this globally rare uh, group of ecosystems has a very limited range. It basically exists on the southern, southeastern tip of Vancouver Island. It extends across the Gulf Islands and then is a little sliver of the Sunshine Coast and a tiny little bit of the greater Vancouver area, including the communities around um, White Rock, Delta, and Richmond. Um, but 30% of their extent is in the Gulf Islands. So it's a really important place. Um, and based on that location in the rain shadow region of BC, where the climate is extremely temperate, you can imagine there's a lot of pressure from human interference on those ecosystems. Um, it's, the CDF is in fact the most converted zone in BC and conversion in this case means a change from its natural state to a more human influenced state, if you're not used to that term. It has a two times higher conversion rate uh, than the next most converted zone, so about 50% of it has been converted for human use. As a result of this, it has the highest density of roads, the least forest cover over 140 years old, and it's one of three zones where most forest associated red listed species in BC can be found and red listed means threatened or endangered or even extirpated. Um, I was speaking with a conservation data center biologist or ecologist rather uh, just earlier this week who told me that most plant communities in the CDF are red listed and in 1998 I found a report that said half of the plant uh, communities are red listed with everything else being at least threatened. So Generally speaking, this part of the world has been uh, subject to a lot of human influence and some of the, uh, that influence has also resulted in invasions of non-native species and disrupted fire regimes and among other things like an overabundant deer population in most of the Gulf Islands, which is really uh, harmful to the understory regenerating. So there's a, there's a lot of human encroachment here. Um, but despite all of these uh, impacts and despite this fragmentation, it's still one of the most biodiverse places in the entire province. Um, and in addition to these ecological values, as uh, Josephine alluded to, it has significant cultural value. The Westanich people are often referred to as the saltwater people. Um, these, air, these places are completely linked to identity and culture. And um, the name Sedaeus is actually means wind drying, referring to salmon. There was a really important uh, reef net fishery off the coast of Sedaeus. Um, so it's, its significance cannot be overstated. And I just wanna do a little plug here for this book, The Saltwater People. Uh, this is an incredible resource. If you're interested at all in learning more about the language or the traditional, traditional place names, I, this resource is really, really valuable. Um, so by now you might be wondering what the role of Rain Coast and the Pender Islands Conservancy is in all of this. Um, so as I mentioned, 30% of the CDF is within uh, the Gulf Islands, but a significant proportion of those lands are privately owned. Um, but there's a really incredible opportunity to do conservation in this area because the Islands Trust, which is for all intents and purposes, the local government of the Gulf Islands, has a mandate to preserve and protect uh, the ecosystems that are found there. But the province has given uh, the Islands Trust few tools to be able to um, implement any kind of really meaningful widespread conservation. So this gap between intention and action was where Raincoast got involved in some of this work. Um, we, one of our senior scientists lives on North Pender Island and was watching this degradation happen and finally decided to do something about it. So we, uh, I was brought on in October of last year. And for the last year, we've been looking into policy and education initiatives to try to change the policy and change behavior so that we can better protect these ecosystems. Um, some ways we've done that is working with the Environmental Law Center to create a list of recommendations for the Islands Trust. Uh, to, we started the Pender Islands Big Tree Registry with the support of the Pender Islands Conservancy. Um, but in the course of doing that work, we've noticed that policy change and behavior change can take a really long time to have tangible on the ground impacts. Um, so in the course of doing this work, we were developing this relationship with the Pender Islands Conservancy um, and they've been doing incredible work over the last 27 years. They do eelgrass monitoring, they do uh, bird studies, they 
co-manage 18 covenants. They have their own two of their own covenants. They've been doing incredible conservation work for many years. Um, and still trees are cut. So we just decided it's time that we do something immediate where we can just protect these forests. And one of the board members of the Conservancy had had his eye on this 13 acre property for quite some time because of its ecological value, of, uh, which describe in just a moment. Um, so we would combine forces and bring the different strengths of Rank Coast and the Conservancy together and pursue this land acquisition. So with that, I will let Aaron tell you a little bit more about the Sedeus Flycatcher Forest. She looks like she could be frozen. Oh, and now she's no longer here. Well, We'll give it just to uh, reappear. I know that it's been a really windy day around Victoria. I don't know what it's like on the islands today, but I imagine the internet can get a little spotty when those winds pick up out there. So Let's see what happens. Very windy on Salt Spring. Yeah. Oh, and somebody lost power last night from the wind. That's not boding well for Aaron's presentation. I'll give her a couple more moments and then we'll see if I can start talking about it a little bit. Oh good, that's, that instills confidence. Nadia says there's still power in Buck Lake and that's pretty close to where Aaron's at. So hopefully that's good. Thirty knots southeast on the south coast of Saturna. I'm loving this chat function. I could just stand here and sit here all day and read everybody's comments. <laughs> Keep them coming. From her, not recently. Oh, my mom is also here. Oh, and now Aaron's also here. Hello, welcome back. <laughs> You're on mute, but once you hit the unmute button, you'll be good. There we go. Woohoo! Aaron, right. everybody. <laughs> uh, internet on Pender is amazing. Mm. Okay, we're ready for the why buy this land, are we? Okay. Um, so I'm going to start by talking about biodiversity on this property that makes it so ecologically valuable. And I would argue that the biodiversity is disproportionate to the size of the property. So if we look at canopy tree species, there's, for anyone who isn't familiar with it, there's stands of western red cedar, there's Douglas fir and arbutus up on the ridge above the wetland, there are uh, riparian forests, uh, mostly consisting of um, alder, surrounding the wetland and in the uh, um, drainage areas. And so this diversity of different forest types leads to very high diversity in other species. So things like understory plants and birds, because different species require different types of habitats, having all of these different types of forests on this property means that it's providing habitat for a lot of different types of species. So we have really high biodiversity given the size of the property. So. Um, in addition to the land supporting a lot of biodiversity, which is, makes it special in and of itself, if we look at some of the individual species that are present, uh, we see some threatened species. So things like all sided flycatchers. And the reason we named it Flycatcher Forest is in honor of the, the all sided flycatcher, which has been identified on this uh, property. Um, and it has very specific habitat requirements that combine wetlands and forests, exactly what we have on this property. It's a threatened species. It's declining throughout most of its range throughout North America. And so anytime we can protect habitat for, especially breeding habitat for um, particular species that are declining, it allows us to maintain biodiversity on the landscape. So some of those species like all of sided flycatchers um, make it really important as well, in addition to the overall biodiversity. 
But beyond individual species at risk, though, it's also important to point out that this land contains a number of specific ecosystems that are classified as red listed in BC. So Shauna mentioned that there are a number of red listed uh, specific ecosystems within the CDF. And what that means is that we're at risk of losing those specific ecosystems. So these are specific uh, plant communities within the CDF. And on this property, there are a couple, the uh, Douglas fir, shore pine arbutus um, stand, which is up above the wetland on the ridge. Um, and the other one is the Grand Fur Foam Flower System. And that for anyone who's approached this property from Sailor Road in North Pender Island in Magic Lake, uh, will have seen part of that in the, the red cedar um, stand. So this is actually really important because there's very little protection for ecosystems in terms of legislation. So I mentioned all sided flycatcher. So as a species, if a species is threatened, it has a number of levels of protection. So it's protected in the case of the sided flycatcher. It's protected under the Migratory Birds Convention Act federally, Species at Risk Act federally, but its habitats and ecosystems in general are not similarly protected through legislation especially on private land, which is what most of North Pender Island is. So it becomes really important then for um, land acquisition to be a, a way that we can actually protect these lands, um, particularly these red listed ecosystems like the ones I mentioned. <coughs> so uh, land protection through ownership then becomes really important and that's why we started this initiative. <coughs> so something else that's been in the news lately is the alarming rate of loss of old growth forests throughout BC, particularly in coastal BC. Uh, of course, on Pender Islands, due to past logging activity, there's very little, if any, old growth forest uh, to protect. But the only way to ensure that there will be old growth forests in the future is to protect mature and maturing forests today. So by protecting the Sadeus flycatcher forest through ownership today, it will, that forest will then be free to move through successional stages that will allow it to reach an old growth successional stage and all of the structural diversity and biodiversity that comes along with that. And no, we won't see that in our lifetimes, but future generations will. So we have to start thinking at the temporal scale of forests, which is beyond a single generation. <clears throat> and speaking of future generations, just to talk a bit about climate change, implications. So it's no secret that forests, trees are really efficient at capturing and storing atmospheric carbon, and especially true for our long-lived coastal forests. Um, but as Shauna mentioned, so much of our CDF forests have already been lost to residential and commercial development. We've lost a lot of that carbon capturing uh, capacity on our landscape. So the more forests like the Sadeus flycatcher forest that we can protect, the more we can start to offset those forest losses elsewhere within our region. And then also related to climate change uh, is the concern about increasing drought severity uh, in regions like ours. So our community's resilience in the face of climate change is really gonna depend on our ability to protect our watersheds. And the wetland in the flycatcher forest has soils with a very high water storage capacity, which is very rare um, on Pender Island. So this wetland is helping with aquifer uh, recharge. It's directly supplying water to the Buck Lake uh, Reservoir uh, because it's part of that Buck Lake Reservoir watershed. So it's hugely important for maintaining water supply for the surrounding community on North Pender. And then finally, if we wanna look outward now from the Flycatcher Forest, <clears throat> this land is part of the larger Shingle Creek watershed. So it's connected to forested lands that extend themselves extend all the way up to Roe Lake Park, which is part of the Gulf Islands National Park Reserve. Uh, and it's also just down the road from Lively, Lively Peak Park. So it's got these connections with these other protected and large forested areas, uh, which is really important. I mean, ideally we'd be able to protect all forests, but due to limited resources, we have to be able to prioritize. And we do that number of ways, one of which is related to biodiversity. And I've already talked about that but also related to connectivity. And so pieces of property or pieces of habitat that are connected to other larger uh, similar habitats are of more ecological value because they allow for movement of animals and plants. So dispersal over larger spatial scales. So having one large piece of forest protected is a lot more 
uh, valuable ecologically than having lots of small islands that are uh, spatially separated from each other. And so because of the location of this particular piece of land, it does have those connections. And so protecting it will help to ensure that continuity of habitat as well. So those are some of the reasons why this property is important. And just a quick note about why now. The Pender Conservancy has had our eye on this uh, particular land for a while. Um, the, its ecological value has not gone, gone unnoticed. We've had discussions around uh, registering a conservation covenant on the title with the landowners. Um, but given the real estate market of this year, there was a, a fairly urgent um, need to do something about this before it's lost to residential development. So, so that sort of explains why we felt this was important to protect now. Um, but it is something that we've been keeping our eye on for a while. So that's a bit about the why. Uh, in terms of what the land will mean or the purchase of this land will mean to the community, uh, I just wanted to mention a few of, of these ideas that we have. So I've already mentioned, obviously, its value for water protection and water supply protection for the community. But in addition to that, so we do want to intend to prioritize ecological integrity over things like recreation value in our land stewardship approach with this property. But we do intend to establish a low impact uh, walking trail along the ridge that, that circles around the wetland. The wetland itself will be fully protected, but the trail will provide recreational opportunities for the community. So we do want people to be able to visit the forest. We want them to be able to feel that connection and appreciation for this ecosystem. So there's definitely going to be a, a recreational uh, value for the community. And then secondly, having protected lands like the flycatcher forest with a continuity of ownership is really important for allowing us to establish and expand on research opportunities and collaborations. So any sort of long-term monitoring project like uh, the avian ecology project that we've started on, with the Panther Conservancy requires that you have uh, land that you can focus that monitoring effort on over a longer term. And without that continuity of ownership, that's difficult to establish. And so having these, these lands that are uh, protected through ownership will allow us to establish those kinds of research uh, projects. So our chickadee study, for example, on Pender Island is basically limited by the availability of large forest habitats. And so this property will help to contribute to that study. Uh, we could es establish long-term forest monitoring plots, knowing that those will be able to be followed across decades. And we also would like to do things like set up trail cams to monitor wildlife activity, we can share those uh, images and that footage with the community through the Conservancy Nature Center here on Pender Island. Um, so there's lots of opportunities to develop uh, research, citizen science projects, um, to monitor and to learn more about the forest. And that will benefit the community both through direct participation and just through education about forest ecology. And Shauna, send it back to you. Yeah, um, and some other opportunities that we see um, is uh, education initiatives for Pender residents as well as members of the Wasinich Nations uh, with a particular focus on youth education. Uh, we're right now in the preliminary stages of planning what some of that work might, might look like with some community partners uh, and I'm extremely excited about it. It's something that I wanted to get off the ground since I started this position and we're uh, collaborating with um, another kind of branch of Rain Coast, the Emerging Stewards Program for some of that work. Um, and we hope that, that those programs can include things like restoration and helping the land heal and uh, monitoring how these ecosystems are changing as a result of climate change. And we hope that these some of our relationship with the Spanish nations can grow these kinds of collaborative efforts and education initiatives. So that's something we're really excited about uh, as an opportunity with this, for this land. I'll send it back to Erin. Okay, so let's just go over some of the, the key takeaways uh, to take home with you from this. Uh, first of all, we've discussed how uh, CDF habitats, uh, despite their ongoing conservation and fragmentation, are both ecologically and culturally significant and they need urgent protection. Um, we've introduced this specific initiative between Raincoast and the Conservancy. Uh, working to safeguard this 13 acre um, property, this habitat 
in the coastal Douglas fir on Sedaeus, North Pender Island. Um, I've discussed how the Sedaeus flycatcher forest is both ecologically diverse, it supports threatened species and uh, ecosystems. It's connected to larger forest and habitats. So ecologically, it's really of high conservation value. It's part of a watershed that's a critical water source for the surrounding North Pender community. So there's an important social component there. And its protection will also provide the community with recreational research and education opportunities in addition to protecting just the biodiversity. So with that, uh, there are a couple of ways that you can get involved with this project. Uh, we're currently sitting at uh, $155,000 raised of the $395,000 needed. Um, that's a pretty incredible number considering we've only been um, working on this fundraising initiative over the past, I think, three to four weeks. So we've had an incredible showing of community support so far. Um, and that just uh, as a note, that 395,000 covers the cost of purchase and the cost of protection. So putting a covenant over that property. Um, there's a few different ways uh, you can donate if you are interested in doing so. You can go to the Pender Conservancy website or the Raincoast website. It doesn't matter who you uh, donate to, it will go to the same cause. Um, you can also email myself or Aaron with any questions you have, um, or if you want to get involved in some other way. Um, so Alex will provide our emails in the chat box. And she'll also provide the links to the uh, donation pages in the chat box. Um, with that, we have a, quite a bit of time left for questions. Um, so if anybody has questions about the property or anything you've heard here, you can just submit those to the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. And we can also share a map. We've had quite a few requests for maps. Uh, we actually haven't really included a lot of maps in our uh, um, in our campaigning because we actually at the very beginning got a little bit scared because somebody drove through the property with an ATV or maybe with a um, some kind of vehicle, and we got nervous that people were gonna go to the property and. I don't know, <laughs> do it, some kind of damage to it. So we got really nervous and haven't shared a lot of maps, but you'll see here on the screen uh, exactly where it's located at the end of Sailor Road. And it's pretty interesting that when you're uh, pretty zoomed in there, you can, like even at that scale, you can see the wetland from here. That, that wetland is a pretty, yeah, thank you, Alex. It's a pretty substantial part of that property. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, and I see a question from Lisa in the chat box. I can't see you, uh, just where you, I can only see the other presenters, but I can see your question. Ultimately, the people that will own this property, it's going to be owned jointly 50-50 uh, by the, the Rain Coast Conservancy and Rain Coast, sorry, the Rain Coast Conservation Foundation and the Pender Islands Conservancy. I've been seeing people call us the Rain Coast Conservancy for a couple of weeks now, and now I'm starting to do it too. <laughs> sorry about that. Thanks for that question, Lisa, and thanks, David, for requesting the map. I hope that was helpful. Does anybody else have any other questions? Oh, we see, I see a Q&A has come in. So 395,000 is the, 395,000 is the cost of purchasing and the cost of the covenant. The covenant is quite expensive as well. Um, so the actual cost of the property is 350,000, but that remaining, uh, those remaining funds cover all of the costs that are associated with the covenant of the property. Ooh, what creatures live in the wetland, Erin? I'll give that one to you. I know you like talking about ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we haven't lived with the property very long, but we have uh, been visiting it throughout the winter and a bit during the summer. And uh, so there are a number of waterfowl species that use the, the pond. Uh, we've had buffleheads and widgeons and mallards so far. There are, uh, there's beaver activity there. So, um, so there's definitely uh, beavers and muskrat actually using the pond as well. Um, I'll just, I guess I saw the question, any favorite species seen on the property? So one of the things when we did a survey in June, we were doing our, our bird survey at six o'clock in the morning to see what was what was there breeding. 
And uh, there were a number of families of various species of songbird and woodpeckers that had fledged young with them. And so that's really important because not only are those species present, but they're successfully reproducing on this property. So it's, it's a really uh, productive system. And that's what the, the successful reproduction shows. And that includes a barred owl family with two young that were very noisily waiting for their, uh, their food to come in from the, the wetland where one of the adults was feeding right, was perched on one of the uh, snags in the wetland, uh, checking out the pond. So, uh, so we had a number of species that were interesting, but of course the olive-sided flycatcher is one of our favorites as well. Uh, and the, is the covenant through the island's trust? Erin, do you want to answer that one as well? Um, sure. So uh, the Pender Islands Conservancy, we are a land trust as well. And so we can hold covenants. Um, so we intended to do that, whether we work with the Islands Trust Conservancy um, on that remains to be seen. But it, we do have a number of covenants that we monitor, that we manage ourselves. So uh, the plan right now is for us to be the land trust that deals with the covenant. <laughs> And I got a question in the chat box. Are there any large funding sources to apply to? There are some, um, we, and we have applied to a few. So we are hoping to apply for a few more bigger grants, which will help us to reach our financial goal. And Aaron, do you wanna take the, do you have any ecosystem assessment reports available online? Um, we don't have anything for this property yet. Um, as part of the covenant process, we will have to do uh, an ecological assessment uh, and inventory for the property. And at that point, that would be available. Um, but we don't have that yet uh, until we actually purchase the property. So, yeah. And then Josephine asked, what might be the first steps or actions taken to restore the area? And uh, I can start with that and Aaron, if I miss anything, please feel free to interject or jump in. Um, I think that something we are really focused on is getting rid of the invasive species. Uh, that's one big thing that we wanna start with. And we have, a, we've included some of that removal in the budget for um, just the initial um, cost of covenanting to get rid of some of those harder to get rid of species. Um, I also really hope to uh, work with some uh, uh, cultural knowledge keepers about some of the practices for helping the land heal. And Erin, uh, if you want to jump in and add anything. Yeah, no, I think that's the, in terms of restoration, it's a fairly uh, intact forest, except for the invasive species, um, Daphne and Broom in particular, um, closer to the Sailor Road end. And so there would be both removal of those and also uh, revegetation with native uh, understory shrub species. Uh, would be ideal in those areas. And I've gotten a question, do you have significant support from Island's residents? Uh, we seem to have gotten quite uh, strong support so far, um, both financially and I've gotten quite a few phone calls from folks who are really excited about this project. Um, so by the showing we've gotten so far, it seems like we've got some really strong support. Um, and it's how about the rest of that watershed, any opportunity to acquire adjacent properties? That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can, uh, yeah, it would be awesome to be able to have a contiguous forest there for sure. Um, but that's all kind of just, we're just focusing on one piece of property at a time right now. Are there any signs of First Nations or settler use or archaeological values? I haven't, I don't know. Erin, have you noticed anything like that in your journeys across the land? No, I have not uh, noticed that on that property, no. Uh, <laughs> my brother has asked the question, what are the evasive species? Uh, <laughs> they, are, they are a little bit evasive. They're mostly invasive. Uh, and those are mostly Scotch broom, uh, Daphne. I don't think I've seen any holly. Uh, I don't see Scotch broom and Daph uh, Daphne or 
is it scourge? Spurge laurel. Spurge laurel. <laughs> Spurge laurel. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Spurge laurel. Uh, yeah. So I always think of it as a scourge on the land. So that it, as a way to remember. <laughs> oh, Misty did oh, see Misty a holly tree. It. Okay. So I thought that I did see some. Um, yeah. Oh, and we have somebody who said donations to today's flycatcher forest make great Christmas gifts can go on people's wish for a list for a present. I agree, Mary. Thank you for sharing that opinion. <laughs> it is a great Christmas gift. I'm actually pretty sure it's certain that my mom got me a donation to the purchase of this property for my Christmas present. So <laughs> I can attest it's a great Christmas present. Is there any other questions? I think that we've come to the end of the list so far, but if anybody has anything else to ask, we're happy to ask those questions. Or if anybody has a question for Josephine, if that comes up. Oh, I don't, I need to scroll down. Uh, did you, do you see this partnership model being extended to other Gulf islands? Um, I wonder, I'm not quite clear on what you mean by the partnership model. Like if you mean Rain Coast being a partner to other conservancies, or if you see that if you're talking about just generally more than one organization uh, going in together to purchase property. So if you could clarify that question, I might be able to answer it a little bit better. Um, but in the meantime, Oh, somebody else also asked if there's what invasive species are present. So we already answered that question. And it says, would you be looking for volunteers to help? Of course. Of course, that would be wonderful. So if you're interested in volunteering with things like that, um, send myself or Erin an email. My email address is shauna at raincoast.org. And Erin's, I believe, is erin.obrien7500 at gmail.com. So if you want to email either of us, our email addresses are also easy to find on our websites. So if you want to get involved in some way, feel free to get in touch. And someone named Anita said that she also thinks that it's a great Christmas present and she told me to give love to Misty, all the love to Misty, who was also the uh, voiceover on that video and did an excellent job in my opinion. Oh, Bronwyn Merle asks, Josephine, what is your dream for this land? Oh, thanks. Thank you, Bronwyn. Hi, Shka. Um, I think, um, I mentioned in um, a previous meeting with um, our wonderful hosts here earlier this week that um, just based off of my um, interactions and my community's interactions with um, Rain Coast and its many representatives and, and representing branches um, that have um, that have worked with uh, the Saint Niche community and, and other communities. Um, from the wonderful work that we've seen that um, I, I can feel confident and we can feel confident in the work that they're doing and that it supports um, um, the work and the values, you know, the work that we are trying to do to reclaim um, access to homelands um, like on Sedeus and um, um, but also, you know, in it supports the values we have into maintaining, you know, our our reciprocal relationship to the land and protecting the lands itself, as you know, foretold in our inherit um, our inherit teachings, and so, so really supporting the rainforest, uh, Rain Coast Foundation, um, you know, supports a lot of our our visions and our values, and then it enables, you know. Um, just uh, from previous work unrelated to this, it, it has brought um, Shauna and myself, our past across and many other people on Sedeus um, and many other people within Rain Coast itself, uh, the, found, uh, the foundation itself. And, um, uh, and then so now there's um, opportunities that we're looking to pursue as uh, St. Nish people to support our um, our cultural immersion programs and language immersion programs, but also just the um, regeneration of um, inherent knowledge and understanding of place, um, like in the flycatcher forest, and um, you know the opportunity to really start to uncover and peel back the layers that we may have 
once understood, um, you know, because of our relationship to the land and all living creations that it's so much more intricate than um, the naked eye will allow us to see unless we're interacting and have a, a kinship type of relationship with place then we can really start to see and, and um, value all life as it's meant to be in its, in its majesty and in its creation and in its purpose for supporting the highest well-being of, of all life, you know, all of us, not just, you know, not just us as humans, but the, the flycatchers themselves and the trees themselves and all the beings. And, and um, so, you know, I'm more than happy to be not only on this call, but to be observing and listening in on the work that and the intentions that uh, Rain Coast has for the area in question. Hi, Scott. Yeah. Do you see what I mean about her being such a great teacher and a mentor? <laughs> She's a teacher to all of us. Um, <laughs> um, and the last question we got are how old are the existing trees? Um, Sometimes it can be hard to tell how old trees are just by looking at them. Um, I think that the cedars at the front of the property, I would guess are probably somewhere between 75 and 80. Would you agree with that, Erin? Some more around that? Yeah, yeah. probably. Uh, and then I think uh, that that's probably true of most of the, there's, there's pockets all over the property that are maturing conifer forests. So I, I think that most of those are probably somewhere around 80. Um, based on the logging history and their size. We're hoping to get an increment borer so we can do some coring of the trees to do a little bit more uh, in-depth investigation into how old these trees might be. So I, with that, unless there's any uh, final questions, I think we might uh, shut it down for the evening. We'd like to thank everybody so much for coming. A huge Heishka to Josephine for doing the land acknowledgement tonight and being here and sharing your knowledge and your stories and your wisdom. Um, thank you to Erin for being here and telling us about the, the ecological values. Thank you to my mom, my brother and my dad for all attending. <laughs> it's a family affair. Thank you to everybody. And yeah, feel free to get in touch with any uh, other questions you might have for us. We're always happy to talk about this project. So thank you everybody and happy holidays to all of you.